Why is it that beauty is so inspirational? Mm. Because it is so mm, shallow. Mm. It is what individuals mm, seek in order to separate themselves from the herd. They look at everyone and see to themselves that, say to themselves, I don't want to be like them, I must be beautiful. Or they seek beauty in others in order to validate their own self. This is a complex question, we assure you, it would take approximately 322 days to completely cover. Mm. We can do this in a workshop at some point. Mm. Hmm. But that's the short version. Okay, and does beauty represent an energetic vibration that we are relating to? Mm. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So realize, dear friend, that what you are observing another, another as beautiful is basically what you are resonating to within yourself. In some cases, most individuals look for that which they've judged within themselves as insufficient and that they see within another as being sufficient. But oftentimes, you are attracted not to the beauty. What attracts you is that they too judge themselves as much as you do. You see? Hmm. Why is it that there have been studies made where people that are, I guess, on the same number in the beauty scale, uh, why are those people usually attracted to each other? Because they're all mm, the same. Mm, like attracts like. So, one shallow individual is attracted to another shallow individual. One intelligent individual attracted to another intelligent individual. One brainy individual attracted to another brainy individual. And so it goes. You see? And the, the statement, opposites attract, is there any truth to that? It's a, it's a great illusion that you create in order to validate mm, the outward physical mm, self. Mm, you can say opposites attract, male attracts to female. Mm, oh, one personality attracts to a different personality. But in truth, what you're doing is you're trying to justify your mm, justification of polarity. That's all. What about nature? What about it? The beauty in nature, it's said to have... How many people really are attracted to the beauty of nature? There's a few that enjoy nature. There's some people that love nature. But to be attracted to nature? Hmm. Not likely, dear friend. You see? Hmm. If that's the nature you're talking. The nature of the individual is different. Hmm. As we said, this is a complex question. Yeah. So what is it about, say, sitting in a beautiful landscape that is calming and healing? Mm, because you're realizing as you're sitting, and not all individuals are calm. It's not the landscape that calms you and heals you. Mm, it is that you allow yourself to heal and calm mm, based on a perspective mm, that mm, nature, as you call it, mm, has that effect on you. But the choice is always yours. It's not nature that does it to you, it's that you do it to yourself using nature as a stimulus. Do you see? Mm -hmm. And in societies where women are supposed to be beautiful? Yes. What does that mean? What are we, what does that say? Again, mean? beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What is beautiful to one society is not beautiful to another. Some societies, a woman with huge 44 double Ds, mm, triple Ds, quadruple Ds, mm, are is viewed as beautiful. A heavy woman, overweight, with lots of nice rolls of fat. Oh, <laughs> so gorgeous. In other societies, unless you're anorexic, and without any form of breasts whatsoever, no hips, then you're not viewed as beautiful. So again, what defines one society's judgment of beauty versus another society's judgment of beauty is just that, judgment. And so the key here is to even ask yourself as an individual for yourself, what makes you mm, see something as beautiful versus not? It's all judgment, do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, why is the debate about vaccines, you know, if parents should have a choice to vaccinate their children, happening in the U.S. at this, at this time? because American citizens are not trusting their government. 
government is basically suggesting that the vaccinations are of benefit. Unfortunately, you know, there has been a history, a proven history, of many individuals within the government that formed the government and who have said one thing and done something else, and as a result of that also said something in order to benefit from it on a personal level. Uh, humanity, American citizens as well, are becoming very aware that when you move into politics, you are not doing it out of an altruistic nature or desire to take care of your fellow human being. You're doing it out of a desire to gain bet, um, power and profit. And so there is a distrust that's building and it will continue to build until such time as politicians um, stop um, in making deals with the backroom boys, making deals with companies, uh, stop the whole political process of spending so much money to try to get elected and therefore have to sell their souls in order to get elected. Uh, when the forefathers of your country began to, when they put together this country called the United States of America, um, they didn't do so on the basis of popularity. Sure, there was a number of them that were popular, but they were popular not because they could sell themselves, they were popular because of their deeds. Unfortunately, as time has moved on, politicians have become, have used uh, basically marketing as a way to sell themselves to the population and they have not been elected because of their deeds, because of their um, realness. So the result in is, is that they've been elected for the image they can present, which of course is an image that is very polished, highly polished, highly controlled, highly manipulated. And as a result, there is a great, great distrust that's building within the population, the general population itself. So when a politician sits there and says, you must get vaccinated, it's to your benefit, people are going, really, right the same way as when they say, we won't raise taxes, and then they raise them right after, you see? And then of course, there's an additional distrust in the large corporations, especially the pharmaceutical companies, uh, something to do with health, where in effect, these large corporations are using their financial resources, their money, their benefits, their, to convinced to market to a population that their products are of necessity. People are starting to see past the illusions that have been created for so long in your society. Is it? Mm -hmm. Now that's not to say that there isn't an actual physical benefit to vaccinations. There is. But it's just that people don't trust it anymore. Is it? Is this a way for humanity to move towards self-empowerment? Everything is a way for humanity to, work, to move towards self-empowerment. Yeah, some people are taking back their power and saying, mm, I don't trust government, but then they're not going beyond that. If you don't trust government, change government. And most individuals, most Americans go, I don't trust government, so they don't vote. Or if they do vote, they say, I'll vote for whoever I voted for before. They don't look at Mm, the reality of the individual. They listen to the sound bites, they listen to the words, and they're convinced, because their memories are very short, that these individuals are so altruistic, so amazing, so pure. And then they find out that these politicians are no better than, than they themselves are. You elevate politicians on, onto a pedestal, and then you find out that um, it's a false pedestal. That's all. Do you see? Is there a more efficient prevention of disease than vaccines? Yes. Mm. Stop. Mm. Build your immune system from birth. Stop protecting yourself from all the mm, bacteria that exists out there. We agree, diseases has can be very difficult and can be very harmful to the population. It can, a lot of people can die from certain diseases. But build your immune system to it. Mm. Vaccination is a good way in some cases, but in most cases mm, it has been overused. Do you think? Are there certain vaccines that 
for certain diseases that just don't work, but are still being marketed? Less effective. That something that don't work, that they're less effective. Look at your flu vaccine. In this, this particular year, this winter of 2014, 2015, your flu vaccine is less than 25% effective. But it has been marketed as very effective to everyone. Mm -hmm. This is why people are not believing it anymore. Mm -hmm. Do they? Yes. And the debate between anti-vaxxers and pro-vaxxers. Vaxxers or vaccinators? Well, it's, vaxxers is the, the slang term for it. Okay. <laughs> but pro-vaccinators and anti-vaccinators, is that going to continue? Because it seems like... Of course, there will always be people who sit there and say, you must, and those who say, I mustn't. Do you see? Mm -hmm. mm, who's right? Mm, everything has a benefit. Mm, vaccination is basically, is a different, is a new methodology, a delivery methodology, based on old principles of homeopathy from way back when. Mm. They're just simply using mm, vaccination as a tool. So they've commercialized the process when really they could have just simply uh, done it differently. It's the process of vaccination that is, uh, is flawed. It's not the, the principle behind it. It's not the, the conceptualization of it. It's the delivery system that needs to be revised. Do you mean the chemicals that are actually in the vaccine? That the way the vaccine is developed, the way it's, it is mm, produced in large quantities by pharmaceutical companies, and the way it's marketed. What would be an alternative? Mm. Exposing the immune system in small, very, very small doses of the disease. Mm. Mm. Not just the virus, the disease. Yes, there would be a reaction, but a very controlled, minimal reaction. And so the body then would, be, would build the immune systems necessary to do so. In other words, you could take the disease and using homeopathic principles, reduce it to one one thousandth, which is a very, very effective vaccine. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Will the east coast of the U.S. get colder or hotter in the years to come? Define years to come. About 10. Ten years? Over the next ten years you'll experience large fluctuations of hot and cold. Uh, you'll find that overall though it'll be mostly colder than what it is, it has been, and in fact you'll find that there will be also some great flooding going on. You'll experience large um, amounts of uh, hurricanes over the air over the last, next ten years, and you will at the same time experience some great flooding. That doesn't mean you won't get a lot of snow, but mostly it'll be cold, colder. Mm, but uh, mm, and so, yeah, some snow in the northern, northeastern portion of the United States, certainly in Canada, and mm, but in the southern portion of the United States, mm, you'll find that it'll be cooler. Mm, there is a great movement of air that's going to take place in the Atlantic over the next 10 years that will bring about a great shift in the, uh, the, the cooling of the planet. Mm. More because the planet is in effect warming, uh, you'll find more mm, of the Arctic shelf and the Antarctic shelf is going to melt, which will cool the water, and as a result, therefore, will bring about a cooling of the air. Do you think? And in terms of water, will there be a water shortage as the, the shifts in climate occur? Mm, there will be in certain parts of the world, yes. On the East Coast, no. Okay. In fact, the East Coast will have such an abundance of water that a lot of places will get flooded, especially close to the coast. Mm -hmm. And winter, winter, what's causing uh, the cool temperatures? Again, it's the melting of ice into the water cools the uh, the water and therefore cools the air. You see? Mm -hmm. Is this pollution though? Originally? Of course, pollution. And part particulate pollution, carbon monoxide pollution, ozone pollution, all of that. You see? Yes. And of course, the planet is at fault too. Uh, things are shifting. Volcanoes are erupting more so than in the past. And you will experience a number of really good earthquakes 
uh, that will create uh, changes in the planet uh, over the next 50 to 100 years as well. So uh, this is coming, is it? Mm -hmm. So is the planet doing this itself? Oh, it's shifting on its own, yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we can, I guess, work with the planet while these shifts are occurring so that it's not catastrophic when it happens? Um, the only way, dear friend, would be for you to realize that for humanity to set aside the arrogance that it has, to the arrogance that it can control everything and realize that it is a, it must live in unison with the planet. The planet will shift. It's the nature of the planet. The tectonic plates will shift. There will be volcanoes and earthquakes and things of that nature. Yes, they are disasters, but you can mitigate them to a certain degree, but you cannot control them. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So. Why build on a fault? It's like putting your ass on top of a fence and uh, someone comes along and makes pickets on it and you say to yourself, whoops, now i definitely got a sharp picket up my ass. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Don't sit on the fence. Mm -hmm. Moral of the story. Thank you. We thank you, dear friend.